second level is yellow, meaning blue, the sky is blue, new outlook. Okay, we've already got pretty rough ground basics that new students are getting. Um, a couple of questions were brought up on the last, the last uh, level we did. On the number two Saran strike, the number two strike, how I came up to here. That was just for the students. It actually can be done from here, it is done from here. But when we work with a new student, I came up here just for the new student's sake. So, uh, however you want to do that is fine. Number two angle is number two angle. Is number two angle. Is number two angle. Okay? All right. We're looking five through nine, the serrata strikes, and we'll translate them to empty hand. Okay? But you grab a stick and a dagger, or a stick and empty hand, doesn't matter. Okay? Do it with me. Okay? Number five. Remember, we're going to be using number five pairs, okay? Again, just for your own, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when we do number five strike, or not number five for us, we're going to come in and do number five pair with the dagger. Again, place your magic on it, twirl, bring back, carry, and the thrust, number five, which is different from a number four. Number five. We're teaching from the inception <coughs> all the pairings of the dagger. Number six. Okay? Number six pairing is done here. But when we do the, the swat of six, we come in, we twirl, bring on the back of the blade, a dagger, bring it across, put on the edge. Okay? Bring this out as a pairing and step in with the right foot with the thrust. Okay? Take some measurement on it. Twirl, place. Kind of doing like an overhead real top from here. Now we're in this position. Come on out, carry here, number six. Step to the right. Thrust in. Okay, why do we step in with the right? Because the longer the weapon, the longer reach. Okay? Number six. Number seven. Number seven is done almost like six, except to go the opposite direction. Here. Number seven, thrust. I mean, the carry of the dagger is done here as we step in the thrust. Okay, again, cool. Bring it back. Come on across, over. This slips down to carry across our body as we step in the thrust. Feels a little bit awkward, but when you start working with this, you can find we can use all the same motion and movements that we're learning right now as a new student. Okay. So, that'll make sense. Number eight. <laughs> eight is done here. And the eight parry is done here. Okay. So, as we come across and cut, we parry here. Okay. Place your opponent. Twirl. Bring it through here. It's like the horses at horse racing. This lets the horse to go. And as we do, we come out with a parry as we flat cut. Come with a flat cut. Using a machete, using a, a, a bolo, a barong, or even a flat saber, you were coming in. Okay, number eight. Oh, wait, can I go too far? Oh, no, number nine, no more. Okay, number nine, it's done here, twirl. Okay, and the cut comes up diagonally. Now, what you can do with here, on number nine, since you only have eight pairs, you can do a counter, a counter stick pair with this. You go counter six and cut up. So when we work with the counters, you don't have to tell a student what it actually is doing. Just have the student come out and make a little small counter clockwise motion movement and finish off with his number six parry as he comes up with his nine. Okay? Counterclockwise. Yeah. Counter, counter six. This would be counter fourth, counter fifth, counter fourth over here, counter six, or counter third would be here. We're doing a counter six. Since he's already done kind of sticks. Okay? It isn't as complicated. You play the tape over. <laughs> but, uh, no, seriously, what, what we're doing here is, is developing a base. Since we're developing a base, we want to develop a base all the way. Because what's going to differentiate what we do is anybody else is this dagger hand. It's not just going to be in a live hand, it really is going to be super alive. The whole idea behind this is getting this secondary as alive as our primary. Okay. Okay. Alright. The last level that we did took about an hour. And this is probably going to take a little bit less. 
And if we're to do it right, we'll be done probably in six hours. So if you guys want, we'll do the whole eight hours or whatever you guys want to do. So it's up to you guys to go for out of the day. But now five through nine, um, this arm. Okay. Again, number five, this arm. The whole idea, the whole idea behind the disarm is, is, is uh, again, to develop the mechanics, the mechanics of, of, of all the, of the possibility of disarm. And what I tell you guys before, how many disarms in reality are there? One. One disarm. There's only one disarm. But, it's, but the student doesn't realize that until after a while, and and hopefully when you tell them, they'll thank you because, or you're still thank you. Because it took years and years for studying for us to realize that point. Which some people still don't at this point let you know. Because the reason why it's important for you to know is when you realize that and you're taught that there's only one disarm, you can do it from any angle at any time with any weapon. And what's important is the student. And if the student's important, then it's important for him to know, for him or her to know, that there's something for the person. So, number five disarm. You can have to put a band right in here. The thrust comes here. As the thrust comes, I go into a pairing block, which is this, really, the number five pairing would be the corsada, okay? In the Philippine arts, this would be the corsada with a cut. In the fencing arts, this would be what? Pin, number one. Okay, from here, as I carry, two options. One option is to step across in the female tribe. You step down the female tribe, grabbing the weapon, and at the end, his weapon. From here, I'm using the butt of the puño of my stick, to come across to use my body to disarm and then strike. As I parry, I have the option of parrying here with a dagger or parrying out here just to stick itself. For right now, with the new students, you can make it easy. Just cut out here with the stick. Step and grab. Notice how when I step, I move my stick out of the way first and then grab. See that? And then I use the butt of the stick to turn here. One more time. <coughs> see how I parry? Then I move my stick out of the way as I grab, see? And then I parry with the puño. The other option from here is using just the body itself. And from right here, you can use the form to execute the disarm and then strike here. You have two very easy options to play with. When we go to our number 10 disarm, he'll be all done with the shoulder and the body. Okay, so. Um, empty hand version, when the thrust comes in, we have to get out of the way. From right here, we can execute kind of a inside number one move if we want, from right here. And then step, using using just the body in the back of the hand. As we turn, let's do this arm from here to finish off. Or as we get more progressive and progressive. Okay, that's number five. Okay, number six, you don't even have to do it. Nine. Number six, the strike comes here. All we're doing, oh sorry, it's here. <laughs> I'm looking at it backwards. Number six, from right here, again, the shock absorber is here. From here, we grab the end of the weapon, place my weapon on my wrist, come up, go horizontal, go with the flow, and right here, you teach your, uh, well, we'll get into some of the cinemas and the numbers in a little bit. So from right here, Deflection, grabbing, placing, going horizontal, and disarming. The weapon of virgin again, from right here, and it strikes. We'll come in with the inside of the one, grab the end, and execute this arm. So what happens is, if you're going to get the new students, they're going to know what's coming to the fight and hold on to the fight. The whole idea behind these systems is someone doesn't know what's happening, what's coming, they have no idea. So that's why these principles can work. Okay. Again, it's only teaching principle. So when you get new students and one doesn't want to let go, ah, I got your teacher. All you do is from right here, just lock him down. See, he'll have to let go. But hold on a second, can you? You bring him down, there's no pressure on me to call him the stick right here. You can bring him down. And in reality, if it should happen, so you, can, you try to do this, I won't go. When I finally find that, I go, you will want to let it pop right into the face. So, yeah, they do it. And if you want to get students who want to hold them to Lock them all the way down. So, um, okay, number seven. Don't go to this way. Do number six. Number six again. From right here. Again. 
fighting with an arm. Gore's arm, now you have two weapons. He's going to do Redondo, he's going to do Sinawaki, okay? And you're going to do whatever you want to do. Number seven, that's the guy comes. And right here, all you're doing, again, shock absorbers, place your weapon on his, grab here, go counterclockwise, and this kind of, it's kind of like the old fencing with the super model. The way it sets right here, the same way. From right here, yeah, as I disarm, I have an option of coming in also. We're going to do this. Again, number seven, disarm. These are from the RD systems. From here, I go around. And straight. Here. Lock place. Place. See where I'm placing? Okay. All I do is go around my weapon. My weapon becomes a photo. Okay. And I can go into whatever I want to push the weapon. Uh, number eight. Number eight, actually, is low number two. Strap, low shot comes in. I'm just doing a low number two disarm. That's all it is. Number eight is a low number two. Um, so I do empty hand. Empty hand. Come here. Number seven, when empty hand comes in, again, with the newest students, you can go in one, two, three, four. Come right here. You go into the basic motion room or outside of the one. Grab. Weapon man here, you just scroll around your own list. Right here, you can show me the basic lock. You can introduce a lot of things. A lot of things are in the curriculum you may want to introduce. That's on an individual basis. That's all up to you guys. I just show this is just a minimum they need for rank. But you can show them all kinds and make it your own little thing. Well, you got to also know this. That's up to you guys. I'm just saying for my own purpose, that's the basics that I like to have them have. And if you want, he wants to add jujitsu to his, or Cloud wants to add jujitsu, and uh, you guys want to add some JKD, whatever, it, that's not really my business. Just that is my business, and, I, and hopefully you guys give him the basis and move on the way you wish. So from right here, when I do the number seven, I might end up just here and here, see? Instead of here, doing outside number one, here, or I might do four count and end up here, and then go through the number seven this time. Okay, and then you go through the bottom line. So the option's yours. Just give them the minimum as we're... Okay, number nine. Uh, oh, eight, eight, what is it? Eight, eight empty hands, the same thing. What you want to do, you're going to be crouching down low, going into position, catching here, or here, and then boom, opposite hand. So you can do two strikes, one, two, three. Since we can't do it outside number one very low, okay, so you have to adapt it. Okay, this would be motion here with here. Okay, two, and we go on two. Okay. Okay. Okay, number nine disarm. Number nine is low here. It looks like some of the serrata disarm. From right here it's like number 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 four. Number three disarm serrata. Okay, from right here, this is our number nine our knees. From here, back of the hand meets back of his. My thumb is the back stop. I push and pull. We go through this right. Here. Strikes like that. From right here, back of the hand meets the back of the mind. I push and pull equally at the same time, simultaneously with equal amount of force. Okay, that was how I Okay. Empty hand version. Same thing. You want to be able to catch here, maybe I get out here. From right here, all you do is here. Sure. Again, the teaching principle. From right here, come in, catch here, or to catch here. Either. And then switch here. Okay. <coughs> Again, when you, as teachers, you'll know that all you're doing from this is just learning principle. All you're doing is learning principle. And having the student have fun with countering from those principles. Right? Uh, Again, when we do the, the five through nine disarm at the end, you can uh, have the students go even farther in mid range. Uh, in other words, when we start doing like the takeaway, the cross talk, and the lift talk, we'll go mid range. Okay? First motion uh, takeaway. Takeaway is taught, this is, a, this is a prime illustration, an example of why the serrata is a sword and dagger, it's a blade when it's an art. Because see, some of the disarms I was doing a little bit flashy, I'm going. When you do the takeaway in serrata, all that's, take, all that's gone away. From right here, as I start with the tape, I catch here, one. I come in here, I step back, very 
very kind of flashy, but it's very practical if we have a brain here. Okay, so again, when I catch, I catch it here, see where I'm catching here? My dagger hand's on the inside, and as I deflect it out, I'm rolling, and I'm turning. I'm right here. As I, I don't even worry about catch, grabbing it, I worry about getting it out of the way. Why? Because it's a blade. Why am I going to grab a blade? So I get it out of the way and grab it with my blade. So that's the idea behind the takeaway. Again, let's get started. So, I catch here, I catch with my right hand, my right foot forward here, as I do, I turn, I go inside, and I step back with my right. From right here, again, I don't worry about grabbing it or using it, this is a knife, this is a bow, this is a machete, this is a baron. okay? From right here, I get it out of the way, and I just cut up here. Okay, see a little bit of different mindset from the other takeaways we were doing? This is like a serrata takeaway. That's called crosswalk. I mean, uh, number one takeaway. Crosswalk is like more for a shot right over your head, okay? If takeaway is done here, crosswalk will be done here, and rooftop will be done here. You ever see that? Go ahead. Straight overhead, I could do probably crosswalk and takeaway. And here would be crosswalk and takeaway. This would be more for the rooftop that we're going to be doing. Okay, so now we're doing crosswalk. From right here, as the strike comes, all we're doing is catching, bringing down, cutting, one, two, three, four, almost finishing off by standard, okay? One, two, three, four, check, and lock, okay? One, two, three, four, check, and lock. And by the way, I, I do these motions and movements to ride to honor Honor Angel Cabalas, who was uh, had a, only the pleasure of working around with him once, but he taught my teacher constantly over a period of a couple of years. My teacher brought her back, and we try to maintain the serrata system up to a certain level intact, out of honor of Angel, and uh, that's why we're doing this. But we'll go beyond some of this stuff, and we'll start thrusting with a sword and dagger independently, and I said independently, intelligently, with the alive hand. Okay. So that uh, okay, that was cross block. Now rooftop block. Rooftop block from here. As the strike comes, what we have to do is we're getting underneath it, and catching here, just like we did in cross block. By the way, the same motion and movements, the same starting positions for cross block, for takeaway and rooftop are all the same. Not this way, this way. Just point it up. When the strike comes, we're getting underneath it. From right here, coming across, and finishing off. Again. Okay. The whole idea behind this, when we do you know, either rook or when we do, let's say, uh, oh, you know, if we're doing, let's say, for rook top from here, empty handed from here, we come across and we scrape with the eyes here and finish off here or here. Finish off here. Again, like right here, come across, we can scrape as we come. Here, or we go back this, check here, or we come in here. If we do uh, takeaway from right here, here we come across here, here. The takeaway is the same as doing the number four or doing the number two. And if you want, you can even do takeaway this way. It doesn't matter. All I did the principle is the same. We do when we do crosswalk here, here, to here, here. That's all we're doing. We can finish off here if we want. When you work with new students, sell it to you. Make it as complicated or as easy as you want. Okay? The whole idea. Oh, when you come into these motion movements, we did take away cross block and lift up. Well, previously we had outside number one, inside number one, we had number five, number eleven. When you do number five, number eleven at this level, you can take your students back. You can go back now. And this time when they do a punch. When they do the outside number one, instead of staying out here, you teach them to come in another level, right to here. You need to have them step forward with the right foot, or have them step forward with the left foot. From right here, they can manipulate up here. They're not really all the way in yet. They're more mid-range now. So they're now here, now they're here. So it's here. Outside number one would be one, two, now I'm in. Coming in mid-range. Okay? That was with the right foot forward. Here, right foot forward already. Left foot forward, see? Mid-range foot. I still have the option of going 
all the way in, or we can get back. Okay, we're now in mid range. Lock them on 11, come right here. Here, one, two, three, four. Once again, I'm not all the way in, but I'm not out of this distance, okay? okay? One, two, three, four. Four, okay? One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. See where I'm at? This is the press, now I can go to the press here. Okay? That's, you can do that with inside, outside. Punches, inside, one, two, three. Okay? Here, here. Okay, so that's inside. Outside, sweet block is the same thing. Sweet block is the same thing. Alright? So you work with your student. Nothing's written in stone, but you can go difference between the outside range and mid range. Okay? Later on, we'll get into the inside range, we'll get into the pressing. Okay? Okay, double center wallet. Real simple. You stick the FTC. You teach double center wallet, everybody teaches the place the same, the same way. Right hand over left. He's picking up three strikes. And side. Very simple. Very good when you work with the two. See that? Punch comes, you work with double center wally. One, two, three. Okay, then on this side, you the same punch comes. One, two, three. Real simple. You can't this one. Double center wally. One, two, three. Two, three. You get out of punch. <laughs> yeah, it's like a four count. Yeah, it was like a four count. It's good. Right down though. Yeah, very minimal. Minimal. You can be slashing. One's more rounded, more more fluid. But what's the idea? The idea is the, the cinnamon is to put it up. The cinnamon should be fluid too. Well, since you got the cinnamon, it's got to be um, okay. It could be just like a redundant. Okay. Very relaxed, very smooth. All your movements should be smooth. The guy who's in the wall, you all the same thing. Okay? Um, let's see the next. Alright. Um, apply these also to your entering motion, which you did. Now you have your students do the outside number one when they entered at mid range. Now you say, hey, now you use in the wall and enter at mid range. Now enter at mid range, one stick. Now you say, now you enter, one stick. Now you enter mid range and do the center wall, combine it with the inside number one, now do your number one this time. Okay? Well, from here to your predominant and flow with the do your number two. Okay? You can make them think, make them work. Okay? And then, well, what's the difference? And you tell them, oh, you say the difference. And I'd be laughing when you saw that game. But they don't know. I think they're working on something different and new. And that's good. It makes them think. And after a while, when they get their ripper ranks, they show them across that all the time. You could have told me my first day here. Yeah, look at this one. Okay. Then in this level, we have the, the basic puno sombrado of the hula drill, four count. Again, real simple. Four count drill is one, two, three, four. I can't stress how important this learning this drill is. From right here, I'm not number one. You can teach you hit on two, you sit, make a little noise. That'll make you real happy, you'll come to the real stuff. Okay? And then after a while, you teach some secrets, tell them all. That's really hitting your head. Okay? And then after a while, we'll just keep on the four count. And if you want, I didn't put it in there, but if you want, you can make them do the four count, put the stick and still in this hand, four count on this side. Come in now. Okay? One, two, three, four. Four, four. Yeah, we're all doing that. I'm catching here. Two, three, four. That's it. It's just exceptionally unfair right now. It is. <laughs> you can act better than someone can do this. That's okay. See? Yeah, yeah, I just thought of it right now. It wasn't that fun. Awesome. So you can do it on that and make them think. Okay? Instead of the hand coming up, touching on the inside, now it's just the tip of the stick. Two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. That would make them think, well, it doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. When you start getting into the secondary strikes and the third intention, fourth intention of the individual, you better have both of these. pretty smart, okay, independent, okay, independently intelligent. Okay. Um, that was his, that was his test for his third. He flunked. Oh, I'm not hearing you. Okay. Uh, sombrata. Basic sombrata. You two ways of teaching this. By the way, uh, a lot of people see Danny and Sam doing this. Danny got this from Angel, and we got this from Angel. So this is where the roots of this are. This is one, two, three, three. This is like the first level you learn. One, two, and three. Then he goes one, two, and three. Then start all over. One, two, and three. It's real simple. Look at those three more things. Just like you said a while. Move around it. See how simple it is? And at this level, we can just start having your students use their dagger hand. Here, dagger hand, dagger hand. Dagger hand. Okay, then you add two more strikes. Right here, slow. One, two, come with cut, come with thrust, shoulder block. Right. And this is about as far as you want to get people in the group. We're going to do another one now. This is about as far as you want to get them to And all we're doing, you'll explain to them what we're doing here. This, we're doing rooftop from the curriculum. We're doing rooftop. This is another three strike. Okay. You done, get down. Thrust, do number five thrust, do a shoulder block, do an overhead hit, do an inside number one, okay? All you're doing is moving from the curriculum. That's what you're teaching them. And they'll think, oh, it's just tag tape. Well, yeah, it is, but you're also learning stuff from the curriculum. <coughs> okay. Finally, we have, uh, oh, we can do this also, this exercise. You can do an empty hand version. You can do it stick blade, blade mindset, stick mindset, and empty hand version. If we do the empty hand version, Empty hand version. Punch comes. What do I do? Rip top. Okay. I strike out. He does inside number one. Comes in slope. I hit down. Okay. Come in. And motion continues. Real simple. You can teach him this motion and move from here. The thrust come. And you can't catch here. Then back this. And you do the shoulder block. That's it. See? Real simple. Real simple motion to move. Same, teach the same principle. We just did it. Yeah. Okay? So it all, all comes into play. Real simple doesn't have to be complicated, but they just did shoulder block. We just did inside move. We did okay, oh, rook pop, hitting. Okay? And then all the moves are in there. They can do it empty hand. Then you can have the blade. You can have the knife to do the hand. We do the knife. If you want this level, it's your option. You know, if you feel they want, you want to give them that, give them the knife. And they're doing the knife with all these different motion and movements. Okay? So you translate, your, we're pyramiding up is what we're doing. That's it, it's enough. Okay, and finally, Juru Saku. Okay? The first Juru. It's the last thing on this one, we'll take another break. Okay? The form. Okay? I'll do it once. Okay, see you guys. You guys want to be with me, it's fine. If not, yeah, relax, it's not fair. Okay. All right, from here to salutation, here. Okay, come right here, bring your hands down to here, down to here, back down, here, punch, go across, now bring it back down to here. Come right here, this position here, the pressing motion. From right here, we go into a brush block. And then a pressing motion. Right here, we clear. Hit. Hit. From right here. These motion movements are taken from the way I'm doing it right now from the pitch of key lap. I'm grinding and hitting. See, we talk actually too. Go back to the other side. Okay, these are, these drills can be done in different mindsets now. Right now, I'm doing kind of a generic mindset. Okay, very generic mindset right now. Press. Press, press, double, extend, double, extend, 
elbow. Now from right here, into my feet. Come in, almost like a kambanga. Kambanga is a flower dance. This huge. Okay, so again, different mindsets, which I'll get into. After about the third level, you want to put the, the seven mindsets, or the different mindsets of the Kung Lung Pai, which I teach you one of the forms. Teach you. He has some of the Kung Tao mindsets, some of the Silat mindsets. What I do is I slip that sheet right in between the next next level because we're going to start doing the different mindsets within this level. Correct? No, next month, next level. So when we get to the next level, we're going to go back to this jewel again and practice it in different mindsets. We have Hokkien, Fukien, Kwantum, Shantum. Okay? Then we have from the Silla, we have Sikritam, Pamor, Petrukila, and I have also added the even though know, it's not formally in in Williams, I had to start off mindset because we've done with his brother and his teacher Pendekar Paul, and we honor him, the stuff that he things that he showed us. And I'm sure you guys have any you guys stuff, so that's why I include it also. Anyway, again this this drew done different minds. I might do it Hokkien. Hokkien might be like monkey in terms of Hokkien monkey might be here. Okay. If I do quantum, it'd be more like to me. Okay. Okay. Different mindset. And the whole idea behind sticking to one mindset through the whole form is the fact that you really get into the mind, the, the, the <coughs> how someone expresses it. You learn shimmy the hands. You understand that portion. You get into it. If you get into a different mindset, like the uh, Indonesian mindset, you, you're really into that. You, everything is done completely like that. You get uh, like a, a one-way street, a railway train. Nothing can stop you, get you out of that mindset. That's what you want to do with Drew when you get into it. You don't add Fukien when you're doing Sarah mindset. Okay, so you stick to one. And if you learn one, each one of those completely, I mean, you really get into it where nothing else exists in the world, and you can switch from any mindset at any time for a the situation you're in. That's why Guru will or Baba teaches those different mindsets and you be able to go in different worlds. Because the more avenues you have to express your, your, yourself, uh, the more you're going to be unlimited. Where someone is just one thing, like a different karate style, it's just one, that's all fine and good, but uh, he's limited himself in his thinking and his other possibilities that come his way. Anyway, so that's for this level. When we take, anybody have any questions on this? Yes? Are you going to do the form face in another direction? Oh, sure. Okay. Give me a take a break. Sure. Again, the salutation has to do with me. Right here, the salutation. I bring your hands down. Keep back this. Hands come down. Roll it back. Okay. Start off here with the press. Lock, push, lock. See the thing from Kumango, Kumango Sila. With the brush motions and the caddy. This is supposed to be a distraction. He sees this and he hears that. It's a distraction. Okay, from right here. So come across here. This is what he again, hitting you the, the hand, going to the face. Okay, or going straight to the face and turning the face. Okay, hit. Okay, and then out. See how I'm pressed here? I'm kind of turned sideways. This is also going to be replacement when I do my soft movement, my sets, and I'm turning his body. And then some when you are here, it looks like you're awkward, but actually the person is really the one I'll tie that to turn. This is what it's teaching. Come back to here. One, two, okay, three. Good, just take it in the last 40 minutes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Intentions, yeah. It, <coughs> in fencing, I, I think it's described before. When a person has, let's say, for instance, I, I set up, I, I paint you, or I set up a quarter, I uh, drawing. I have my hand here. I have all this open here. But my intent is for you to take that. Well, my intent might be also for you to take that. That would be my first intention. But my second intention would be for you to come over here so I can catch you here. But some people are so good they have the first, second, and third, maybe even the fourth intention is unheard of. Although not even supposed to, supposed to be a fourth intention. I mean, can we make someone do anything they want or when they want to the fourth level and encounter them? But without them knowing that he actually meant to do that. So, different intentions. So when I get a first punch, his second. <laughs> I know already, when he punches on this first shot, second intention is already a foregone conclusion. Okay? But he may be planning that. From right here, he may be planning that. He may be, maybe he has a, a knife in here, and he wants me to do that to get here so he can come in and cut here. That would be his, his, uh, his third intention. Okay? So he may, you know, he, may, he may know, actually set me up for that. Okay? Well, he may want me in this position because his his third intention from here to punch is from here to maybe just come in here and just block in here. That's his third intention. But I may know that. So my second and third intention might be opposite his. I know he's probably going to do that. So when he does that, okay, and then he comes in, I have this. Okay? So that's like my chest my thing. Second and third intention. But you want to be able to develop the ability of second and third intention. And, and hopefully, you guys, they want to be able to for the fourth intention. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, my next intention is take a break for five minutes. <laughs> okay?